Pokemon is one of those games that I really like to play, and I've done a lot of iterations of it on the channel. I've done Pokemon Broke Bronze on Roblox, I've done Pixelmon on Minecraft, and finally, I'm doing OG Pokemon on Pokemon Shield. So today, I'm not doing just regular Pokemon Shield, I'm deciding to do a Pokemon Shield Nuzlocke. So if you guys do enjoy, consider subscribing. It shows me that you enjoy my content and you want to see more of it in the future. But in every Nuzlocke, there's a certain amount of rules, and let me tell you the rules right now. So the rules of Nuzlocke is pretty simple. Basically, if a Pokemon dies, it's dead. You can't use it again. You can only catch the first Pokemon you see on every route, but the way we're doing it is the first Pokemon that I encounter in the grass, doesn't matter if I see the world spawns, and you have to nickname every Pokemon because you have to be more attached to them for some stupid reason. So when you lose them, you cry. Usually those would be the only rules, but there are a few rules I am adding. Number one, we're going to be playing on set mode, which basically means you can't switch into a Pokemon before they send theirs out. The next one is the wild area. Basically in the wild area, there's a ton of spawns, there's a ton of different routes, there's all this stuff. So we're only going to be picking three, the first part of the wild area, the second part of the wild area, and the lake of outrage. A few more things, we're also allowed one raid in the Nuzlocke just to spice things up, make it a little fun. We can still do raid battles, but the only one we can catch a Pokemon in is the one we choose to do it. So we're going to say, oh, we're doing it now. They're going to go in it, see what it is, and then we'll get it. Final last rule is I'm allowed to use items in battle. I hope you guys do enjoy, and if you guys do enjoy, consider subscribing, and let's get straight into the video. Ah, the first day of my Pokemon Nuzlocke. The first thing I do is grab my stupid bag, which gives me this awful hat. Anyway, shortly after that, I go meet my rival, I mean best friend. <laughs> this is going to be a long journey, isn't it? After the encounter with my best friend, I go meet up with his big brother, Leon, the champion of the Gala region. But thankfully, he takes pity on me because I'm Hop's best friend, which is my rival, by the way. And he gives me my first Pokemon. This is usually a hard decision, but I've done a few playthroughs and I've never picked score buddy. So I did and named him Cheddar. After getting my starter, I have to explain Hop's place in the bigger picture, and let me just say, this is the first of many times we have to have this long and drawn out conversation. Just give up, come on. Oh, this part's great, you're gonna love it. For some reason, the Wulu that was like in front of the house that I didn't mention broke through a gate. So Hop and I decide to go in the dangerous forest that everyone tells you not to go, and we go to save it. Thankfully, we didn't die though. Hey, but on the bright side, I did get to see my favorite Pokemon of all time, question mark, question mark, question mark. On the downside, I was quickly shown my place in the bigger picture by question mark, question mark, question mark, and I soon realized my plot armor was gone. But it's all good because Leon, the champion of the Gala region, is there with Wulu. After the totally safe encounter in the dangerous woods with all the dangerous Pokemon, even though we only have level five starters, we go through a bunch of lore and I finally get my first encounter. It was a rookie D at level four that I caught and named it Bored. Why Bored? I don't know, because it's a bird and I'm not very creative. After catching Bored, I head to the research lab where I meet Sonya and she tells me a bunch of information about Pokemon and all this stuff, which I already know. And as soon as I leave, this random dude outside the research lab offers a 10 year old drugs. And like any responsible 10 year old, I took it from him. After getting <clears throat> drugs from that strange man, I need to do something about these clothes. So basically in Sword and Shield, I just, I hate the outfit, okay? I have no fashion sense whatsoever, but even I can tell that hat right there is not working. So I go to the nearest store and get some drip. <laughs> I hate myself. It's not perfect yet, but what are you gonna do about it? After obtaining the <laughs> drip, I meet up with Hup and caught a low tad on Route 3 that I named Tad. By the way, for some reason, I really like low tad and the evolutionary line. It's probably from the nostalgia from Ruby and Sapphire, so I was hyped for this. After talking to the Pokemon professor, Hop challenged me to a battle again for some lore reasons or something. Like, come on, I don't know, something for Leon or something? And it goes just as bad as well as you might have thought it would go. I beat him. After I finished crushing Hop's hopes and dreams and making his brother proud of him, then boom, my plot armor finally arrives because conveniently two wishing stars appear right in front of Hop and I. So now we have fancy new wristbands that can make our Pokemon go big. Wow. After buying some Oran Berries from some random guy, I set out to the wild area, a completely broken area in Pokemon Sword and Shield where you can get basically any Pokemon in the game from. But first, I had to get my Pikachu from some random guy because I spent $60 on a Pokemon game three years ago. I named him Bread, by the way. Once in the wild area, I set off to look for my very first encounter, which is a Stuffle that I named Stuffy. Very creative. 
I know. After catching Stuffy, I made my way to Mostoke where Sonya showed me how a Pokemon Center worked for some reason. I made sure to grab some more Pokeballs and potions on my way out and got myself a well-deserved haircut and some more drip. Oh, I hate myself. The next thing I know, I'm picking the number that will define me for the rest of the game, and surprisingly, it wasn't 69 or 420. The number I decided to pick was 53. Why 53? I don't know, it's just my favorite number. You know, I just realized I haven't gotten any sleep in this game, and for some reason, it's night. So this random guy takes me to a hotel, thing, and after getting into a petty squabble with some Justin Bieber fans, because, I don't know, they cut in line or something, they challenge me to a battle, and come on, do they not know when they're staring down the main character? So, I swiftly showed them their place in the bigger picture, and then, I went to bed. Problem solved. In the morning, I go to this orientation thing where all the gym leaders come out and wave their hands for a while. Pretty boring stuff, but no, it's not boring. Hub challenged me to a but no, it's not actually boring. My next encounter. My next encounter was a Mudbray that I named Bullseye, which I think is a good encounter, hopefully. And just like that, I got a team of six. But no time to focus on that because we have our next encounter in the Galar Mines, which is a Roly Coley that I named Brock. Why Brock? Because Pokemon, I don't know. After beating up a few miners, haha, <laughs> get, get it, miners, like, you know, mi miners in the caves, because we're, yeah, Galar Mine, yeah, get, get it, out. anyway, I start thinking about how to incorporate Brock onto the team, because currently he's just sitting in the box collecting dust, but I don't have that issue anymore, because boom, bead fight, and after a lapse in judgment, beads hat, hatina, hat, hat, hatari, hatina, killed board with the confusion, and just like that, one of my favorite Pokemon is dead, and we have our first death. I'm not crying, you're crying. But with every loss, we have a new Pokemon to step up in its place. And just like that, Brock joins the team. Sorry. Just kidding, we got our next encounter, which is a Galarian Meowth, which I really don't care about. I really don't like this Pokemon. I've never liked Meowth. It's probably because of how much I play Pokemon Go and how much it used to spawn, but he is a steel type and Word was a steel type, so it's the natural choice to put him on the team. Oh yeah, and his name's Furry because I, I don't need to explain. I'm not very creative. After I get my team healed up, I head to the grass gym, and may I remind you, I picked the fire type, so everything is burned and everyone is dead, and I do have the grass badge. Why didn't I explain the grass gym fight? I, I have a fire type. No one survived. On the bright side, I head to the daycare to pick up my Toxel that I named Sparks, and I decided to replace it with Bread the Pikachu after learning Bread the Pikachu can't evolve, so I can't get a Raichu, and I don't want to be running this entire game with a Pikachu. <laughs> anyway, after beating a few trainers, I run into Team Yell messing with an old guy. So like the protagonist that I am, I beat up Team Yell and the old guy gives me a bike. And let me just say, I'm so happy that I finally have some mobility in this game. Like, think of the possibilities. I can ride through the wild area or ride into Hop, where he challenges me to a battle and I take out every single one of his Pokemon with ease. So it really was a big deal. After the battle with Hop, I prepare for the water gym and give it a try. Here's the thing. I did choose the fire starter, which means Cheddar probably shouldn't fight in this gym at all. So that leaves me with basically Tad and Sparks. But Sparks is too low of a level and has zero defense. So what could possibly go wrong? Okay, things kind of went downhill. With my strongest team member being unable to fight in this gym, this left me with Tad, which was fine until I got to Nessa, the water gym leader. Tad was able to take out the Golding and Aracuna, but it was the Dreadnought, which was the problem. And unfortunately, Furry had to pay the ultimate sacrifice. I had to sub in Furry to give Chad a chance to heal up, and with 4 HP, I was able to pull out the victory. But you know what? Furry was the Pokemon I had the least attachment to, so eh, thanks anyway. After obtaining the water gym badge, apparently I'm supposed to have dinner with a few people who are clearly the villains of this game, but Sonya did give me Retaliate, a TM that I will never use, ever. So yeah, a big waste of time, but I guess it technically moved the plot forward, so still waste of time. After the totally not awkward dinner that I had with the totally good guys, I head to the Galar Mines too. That's really what it's called, Galar Mines 2. Okay, anyway, I ended up catching a Shellos, which was cool, but I already had a dual water type Pokemon and a grass Pokemon, so I named it Gummy and sent it to the box. But don't worry, Shellos lovers, because fear not, 
a bead battle is approaching and you all know what that means unfortunately for you guys i came prepared and i had stuffy a normal type pokemon that knows a dark move and since bead has a bunch of psychic types this should be too easy Oh shoot, I forgot Stuffy was half fighting type. After exiting the caves, I catch a Rogan Rolla named Rogan that I'm probably not going to use because it's a trade evolution to get it to the final stage. Gotta be honest, the fight with the Edgelord girl wasn't hard at all. Cheddar kind of just swept her entire team and he's not even over leveled. He's like two levels over. But after the fight, I went to bed again. It's so weird how like it's always day and then suddenly it turns night. But anyways, I get ready to enter the fire gym. The Fire Gym's trial is kind of like you get to battle a few Pokemon or you can catch them for more points. And I was like, hey, this is an encounter. So I caught a Sizzlepeed in the gym. Okay, time to fight the Fire Gym leader that I don't even know the name of. So basically, here's how it went down. The Ninetales gets taken out by Cheddar while the Arcanine goes down by Brock. And after a few Max Rock falls from the one, the only Brock, we earn the Fire Gym battle. But more importantly, we made it to the second part of the wild area where we encounter a Corvus Squire. And just like that, Word is back on the team. After catching Word the second, we finally made it to Hammerlock. And what is that I see? <laughs> Drip. After a much needed change of clothes, we go through about 30 minutes of straight lore until we make it to Route 6, where disappointedly, instead of a trappage, we get a heat more than a name Heater. Then threw it in the box. At least the other Pokemon could be warm now. <laughs> Get it? After a bunch of long and drawn out trainer battles later, we finally make it to what's this place called again? Stowside? Right, Stowside. I'm probably pronouncing that so wrong. Once I enter Stowside, I do a little bit of stealing, then Hub challenges me to a fight. Well, looks like it's time to show him his place in the bigger picture. Go oh, gosh, Sparks just died. But like any true anime protagonist, Cheddar steps up while fighting the ghost gym trainers and Cheddar evolves and gave us that edge that we need to beat the gym. <laughs> you thought you thought I was being serious? Yeah, Cheddar did evolve, but um, you think it would be that easy? No, life isn't always fair. Guess what happened? Can you guess? Well, <laughs> let me tell you, when I was fighting Big Bad Social Anxiety, he ended up killing, no, murdering Tad, my favorite Pokemon on my team, my guy, the one from the beginning, gone, dead, and he didn't even get to be a Ludicolo. And now, I'm going to be honest, things weren't looking good. I probably would have lost this fight if I didn't sack bread to heal Cheddar, and it was still a close fight. And just like that, half our team is dead, and we got the badge. When is this video going to be over? Okay, let's see the damage. Well, our team now consists of four fire types. And I have to fight Beat again. We're losing another Pokemon, aren't we? Finally, some good news. The fight was easy. Bad news is, a bunch of lore happened. But after this sword and shield nonsense, I run into this creepy forest and catch a... Morgem? that I named Edgy Goth Boy and <laughs> added him to my team. Why did I do that? After running around this maze of forest, I decide my team is awful, like garbage. And I'm gonna lose this run unless I do something. So I decided to do a little grinding to make my team look like an actual team. So I went to the wild area and did a ton of raids and got a bunch of X and leveled up all my Pokemon to about level 35. And let me just say, I'm liking my team. With Gummy replacing Tad and Bored and Sizzle fully evolved, my team was looking good. You know, I'm looking at my notes right now and I didn't mention when I entered the Fairy Gym. So I entered the Fairy Gym, but with Bored on my side, my newly evolved Corvus Squire, I knew Opal's Fairy Gym was going to be no problem. If you don't know, Steel and Fairy don't mix, and I don't think I even need to go over this gym, because he basically single-handedly killed everything. And just like that, the Fairy Gym was mine. After the Fairy Gym, I journeyed back to Hammerlock, where Hop was waiting for me. Again. You know, you don't get many second chances in Nuzlocke's when you lose Pokemon, but the fact that we got word returned to us is just amazing. But... 
why not have another miracle? <clears throat> His name is Blitz. I'm, I'm so happy. After catching Blitz, take that hop. I then venture to Route 8, fighting several trainers along the way. That's when I see him. My boy can't even pronounce his name. And I catch him. After catching Charles and going through a super hot desert, I somehow end up in a cold, snowy forest where I catch myself a snowbird named Chad. And surprisingly, this is actually my first grass type I've caught in this entire run. So many rock types. Right before I enter, Searchester, Blitz evolved, and once again, the God Squad has returned. Let's just hope he doesn't die like his cousin, Sparks. With literally nothing to do in Searchester, I challenged the Ice Gym, but this is a great time to remind you guys that I chose the Fire type. Cheddar kind of just killed everything until we got to the Gym Leader, and uh, I'm really starting to hate these guys. First thing that happens is Cheddar Oko's Frostmoth and Darmanitan with two Pyro Balls, but is forced to switch to Blitz when SQ comes out. Thankfully, Cheddar bounces back and takes him out. Here's when the problem starts. One Max Geyser to the face takes Cheddar out of the fight, leaving him at 42 HP. Thankfully, Lapras is half water type, so I send in Blitz and he gets Oko'd by Surf. Thankfully, Edgelord is able to finish off Lapras, earning me the Ice Badge. After the gym, Hop challenges me to a battle, but haha, <laughs> guess what? Blitz is already dead. You don't get to kill him this time. Ah, <laughs> uh, dang it. The issue is, as much as Charles tries, he's just not doing anything to Hop's team. But Cheddar and Gummy have his back and sweep his team with ease. After Hop's fight, I head to the next route where I encounter a Cramorant, which is another Pokemon I always wanted to try. Here's the problem though. I use Charles to get the Cramorant low, but Cramorant hits Charles with a pluck. Then the hail kills him. So uh, yeah, it's not the most devastating blow. I, he wasn't the best Pokemon. I just kind of was looking forward to using him a little bit, but I did catch the Cramorant, so... I guess it's kind of disrespectful replacing the Pokemon that died with the Pokemon that killed it, but uh, that's going to happen in just a second. I use my new Obama Snow to defeat Team Yell, who is picking on that one old guy again who gave me the bike, and as a reward, he gives me a water bike, a bike that can somehow float on water, and uh, I encounter a level 50 Grap a lot, or whatever it is. You know, the one who should be a water type, but he's a fighting type. Yeah, this Pokemon is cool. But now, I hate it. But here's the problem. Get tired of hearing me saying that yet? <laughs> the fight with Team Yell caused Obama Snow to be at 28 health, and I wasn't paying attention to that. So, like an idiot, I threw the ball and realized Obama Snow is dead. I guess as long as I catch him, right? It'll be worth it, right? I catch him. It'll be fine. So I sent out Blur to try to catch it, and after a few balls later, Blur dies to a super power. Let me just tell you, this one hurt. As tempted as I was to kill this guy right here for killing Blur, I knew I needed him. With two of my team members dead, I needed this Pokemon more than ever. So with the help of Gummy, I caught the killer and named him Squid. Obama Snow and Blur, you will be remembered. After that terrible loss, I went back to the Pokemon Center to try to salvage my team, and with no other options, I knew it was time. It was time for me to catch one raid Pokemon, my one trump card. So I set off to the wild area, and to my luck, I found a Bolt Hound that I conveniently named Bolt. With him on my side, it gave me access to a strong electric type Pokemon that can even learn a few dark and fairy moves. After all that, I finally arrived at the dark gym entrance where I caught a weird iceberg Pokemon that I named Iceberg. After that, it was time for the dark gym. You couldn't Dynamax in this gym, and I was a little, a little is an understatement, overleveled like, I was overleveled like 10 levels, so we're just gonna skip this gym. After the <laughs> complete struggle, right, that was such a close fight that the dark gym was, I made it to the next route, and to my surprise, 
There he was, a Corviknight. Word the Third was here. He wasn't done yet. He wouldn't let himself die to a wild Pokemon. And he was here, and he was gonna help us battle against the last gym. Another thing, if you think about it, it's kind of ironic. I caught a Rookity, then I caught a Corvusquire, and finally I caught a Corviknight. I knew my boy Bored wouldn't let me down. He's back on the team. Let's go. Finally, it is time for the final gym. The last battle before the quote unquote Elite Four. This gym used double battles, and though we were over leveled, they did give us a run for our money. But finally, after defeating all the trainers, it was time for the final fight the Dragon Gym Leader. So here's what happened. Gummy and Edgelord took charge using their fairy and water moves to decimate his team. Then, all that was left was his final Pokemon. His trump card, his D-Max, Derilodon. Well, Edgelord is a fairy type, and Derilodon is half steel. Unfortunately, mistakes happen and sacrifices had to be made, and with one max steel spike, Edgelord was gone. But, with his sacrifice, it allowed Gummy to Dynamax and get his max Hailstorm off, Okoing Derilodon. May this be a lesson. No matter how overleveled you are, you still should focus and learn from your past mistakes. But with that said, we have now earned our final badge, and it is time for the Elite Four. We just kind of have to replace our team member first, but you know, yeah. But when one warrior falls, another one will take its place. So I ventured to the wild area once again and went to the Lake of Outrage and caught a, uh, I named him Drappy. You see this Pokemon, you know who it is. I can't pronounce it. I'm not even gonna try. With a little grinding later, I got him to level 60, letting him evolve, making him the strongest Pokemon on my team. But finally, my team was made. The team I will be using to end this game. Cheddar, Drapey, Bolt, Board the Third, Gummy, and Iceberg. So there I was on Route 10, a few trainers in my way till I made it to the end of the game. Though my team is set, that doesn't mean the Nuzlocke is done. And with that said, I encountered a Rhydon that I named Rai Rai. I'm just, I, I'm kind of done with the whole Nuzlocke po portion. I, I was never creative before. What, what makes this any different? After that, I went through every last trainer till I finally made it. So you can read the name. Home of the Elite Four. But before the fight, before the final battle, <clears throat> drip. The first fight was against Edgy Girl. Drappy O-Code her Leopard then swapped to Bolt. But Bolt took a crunch to the face and I had to swap him with Bored the Third that finished him with a body press. Next was her Mopeka, which Bored easily O-Code as well. Bored the Third continued to O-Code Toxic Girl. Finally, Bored Dynamax and finished her D-Max Grim Snarl. And just like that, I ruined a kid's dreams of being champion. Well done, me. The next fight was against Hop. We have been rivals for so long. Neck it. <laughs> neck it. Ne neck. <laughs> Through. Our whole adventure. Okay, Hop, listen, you knocked out one of my Pokemon, okay? I'm sorry, you knocked out one. You got lucky. It was my mistake, too. You, it shouldn't have even happened. Okay, Hop, this is the last time I show you your place in the bigger picture. I am going to crush you so hard, I'm not even going to explain what happened. And I did. I crushed every single one of his Pokemon, forever ruining his dreams of being like his brother, a champion. Wow, that got dark. I guess I had some uh, emotions underneath that I uh, <laughs> haven't expressed until now. Uh, sorry, Hop, better knocks last time. I, I'm, I, we can still be friends, right? Right, right, yeah. After crushing all of Hop's hopes and dreams, I take a well-deserved rest. You know, this is actually the third time I've slept in this entire thing, so uh, I had to make it count. But when I awake, for whatever reason, I have to go on a wild goose chase looking for a man for some reason. Apparently Leon is missing or something. But after I beat this random guy, Hop and I go to a giant building where we steal an elevator and fight waves and waves of double battles against employees until we reach the top. Then we fight a weird assistant lady. 
Are we the bad guys? Anyway, she was a kind of tough fight, but it, it wasn't a big deal. I didn't lose any Pokemon, but no, it's worse. I spend the next five minutes listening to Chairman Rose and Leon talking about destroying the world. Hey, wait, I never told you Chairman Rose's name, so uh, if you didn't know, there he is. <laughs> As the, he was like the evil guy. <laughs> yeah, oh, whatever. After all of that, we meet up with Leon, we talk with him, and there is literally zero repercussions for breaking into private property, beating up a bunch of employees in Pokemon battles. And like, we just, we just did all this stuff. We probably broke so many laws. And, <laughs> but it, it doesn't matter. It's time to fight Leon, the champion. Ah, who am I kidding? Apparently I haven't fought the Elite Four yet, so here we go. But uh, I guess a bead broke in or something, and now I have to fight her away. That's a guy. <gasps> wow, I actually spent so long thinking that was a girl. Now that's pretty funny. <laughs> not, not gonna lie, when I played this game for the first time, I thought it was a girl, and then I watched a stream and it turned out it was a guy. I was like, oh. Anyways, Beat has taken so many Pokemon away from me, it's time to go all out. Together, the OGs, Cheddar and Bored, well, I mean, Bored's kinda OG, you know what I mean. Take her out, but the one that deals the finishing blow is Gummy. The Pokemon we caught after the first fight with him. The first replacement, the first Pokemon that stepped up after the killing spree that Bead presented. And finally, we beat him. We avenged our fallen comrades, and they can finally rest in peace. The next fight was against Nessa, which went about as well as you think. Drapey kinda swept her whole team with Thunderbolts, because her whole team's water types. But anyway, on to the next fight. Oh yeah, Mr. Social Anxiety, when I was really mad because he killed Tad. Ah. <sighs> You know, it's kind of weird that I keep fighting the trainers that like killed my Pokemon. First it was Bead, then it was Nessa, and now, oh wait, his, his entire team's dead. Okay, next fight. Finally, it's time to fight the Dragon Guy, which I just fought, so why are they making me fight him again? I don't know, but yeah, blah blah blah, Drapey killed them all, but Blur did get the last kill against Mr. Trump Card Derilodon, so you win some, you lose some. Finally, it's time for the fight to end the game, to fight to end all fights. It is time for me to fight the champion, and there was nothing, and I mean nothing, that can stop me. Lord, <laughs> Lord, dang it. So yeah, for whatever reason, Hop and I come back to the forest that we're at the beginning, how convenient, and I catch a wheezing and grab a shield, then uh, I run off to stop Chairman Rose from destroying the world. <laughs> Just the average day for a protagonist, right? Ah, time to come clean. During the entire lore fight, I did it all. I got to Leon. I started fighting Leon. Then my capture card crashed. So I quickly went on my Switch and I left. I logged out of the game. But there's this stupid thing that I enabled called autosave just, just in case I got any fun ideas from resetting if I lost the Pokemon, which I didn't do, by the way. So, uh, yeah, I don't have any footage of the endgame fight against Chairman Rose or the Legendary. So if you think about it, it's technically like this whole war thing didn't happen. It's like I fought Leon right there because uh, my save point was right before we fought Leon. So... Yeah, we're just gonna pretend that Chairman Rose is a good guy and he didn't try to destroy the world or anything and everything's going according to schedule. So yeah. But uh, don't worry, I won't be using the legendary. I'm just gonna be using my team. So uh, yep, no legendary, no plot armor, none of that, just straight on fight. So with that said, here we go. Finally, the end of the game, the last battle against the champion. It doesn't matter if I win or lose, because no matter what, the video ends here. The video ends whether we win or lose. If we win, the video ends because we beat the game. If we lose, the video ends in defeat. So, 
It's time to go all out, and it's time to win this fight. I lead the fight with Cheddar, and he leads with Angeslash. Fortunately, I have the advantage, but Angeslashes are notorious for leading with King Shield, and to no one's surprise, he does. But I O code him the next turn. He then retaliates with a Haxorus, so I switch to Iceberg, which is an Ice type against a Dragon type. So, with a Lucky Blizzard, I freeze him and take this opportunity to switch into Bolt, who finishes him off with a Play Rough. So we're doing pretty good right now. Two poke, one down. For some reason, he throws in his Inteleon, who was weak to Electric type moves when Bolt is out. So I just instantly O code him with Wild Charge, and that's three Pokemon. After his Inteleon, he sends in a Dragon Bolt. I attacked him with Play Rough and eventually Bolt holds on with 2 HP, he is not dead, he is winning this fight, he's making it to the end, and Bolt finishes him off with a Play Rough. Mr. Rhyme is next, which Cheddar easily Oko's because you know he's an Ice type, and finally he sends out his Charizard. And I would love to tell you guys that I won this fight. I'd love to tell you that I ended up winning the game, and I can. <laughs> Here's the thing though, I love to tell you that I won on in a head-on-head -head Cheddar v Charizard fight. I love to tell you that we win out and won in style like the true champions we are. But I'm gonna be honest, we cheesed him out. We cheesed him out so hard. He, he Dynamaxed with his Charizard and he'd hit me and then I'd Hyper Potion. Then he'd do it again, then i Hyper Potion, then he did it again, and then i Hyper Potion. And then i Dmaxed and then I killed him. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Um, that's how it went. <laughs> I can't. It's not the most honorable way of winning a Nuzlocke or a fight whatsoever, but it's my way, okay? Memes before dreams, I guess. <laughs> I mean, we still won. <laughs> but anyway... That's it. The game is over. I won my first ever Pokemon Shield Nuzlocke. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you did enjoy it. If you did, consider subscribing. It shows me that you enjoy my content and you want to see more of it in the future. With that being said, I hope you enjoyed the video. And with that said, one last time, this is Piggle signing off.